My Life and Work by Henry Ford in collaboration with Samuel Crowther. Chapter 3. Starting the Real Business In the little brick shop at 81 Park Place, I had ample opportunity to work out the design and some of the methods of manufacture of a new car, even if it were possible to organize the exact kind of corporation that I wanted, one in which doing the work well and suiting the public would be controlling factors, it became apparent that I never could produce a thoroughly good motor car that might be sold at a low price under the existing cut-and-try manufacturing methods. Everybody knows that it is always possible to do a thing better the second time, I do not know why manufacturing should not at that time have generally recognized this as a basic fact, unless it might be that the manufacturers were in such a hurry to obtain something to sell that they did not take time for adequate preparation. Making to order instead of making in volume is, I suppose, a habit, a tradition, that has descended from the old handicraft days. Ask a hundred people how they want a particular article made. About eighty will not know. They will leave it to you. Fifteen will think that they must say something, while five really have preferences and reasons. The ninety-five, made up of those who do not know and admit it, and the fifteen who do not know but do not admit it, constitute the real market for any product. The five who want something special may or may not be able to pay the price for special work. If they have the price, they can get the work, but they constitute a special and limited market. Of the ninety-five, perhaps ten or fifteen will pay a price for quality. Of those remaining, a number will buy solely on the price and without regard to quality. Their numbers are thinning with each day. Buyers are learning how to buy. The majority will consider quality and buy the biggest dollar's worth of quality. If, therefore, you discover what will give this 95% of people the best all-round service and then arrange to manufacture at the very highest quality and sell at the very lowest price, you will be meeting a demand which is so large that it may be called universal. This is not standardizing. The use of the word standardizing is very apt to lead one into trouble, for it implies a certain freezing of design and method, and usually works out 